All right, bless me knitters. It has been about 27 days since my last podcast. I'm Darcy and this is the Darcy Does It podcast where I talk about me and all of the things that I make, things that I live and things that I have opinions on. And I am from St. Louis, Missouri. This is where I'm currently living with my dog, Saucy, my two cats, Spot and Bernie, and my wonderful husband, Arthur. We are, uh, I'm a speech therapist and he's an occupational therapist. We have a practice together where we serve adults with developmental disabilities. Um, my husband also works with veterans. He is a Air Force reservist and I'm very grateful for his service, which provides me with premium health insurance, which I recently had to use when I had COVID. So I had COVID at the beginning of October and I did the test and like as soon as the drops hit the test, you know, they say like, wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes, within 10 seconds, that bad boy was like, woo, it's you. You got the COVID. So I had pretty moderate symptoms. Um, this was my second time having it. I've had several vaccinations, maybe like four or five for COVID at this point. Um, so I had some moderate symptoms and my doctor did prescribe me with the Paxlovid, which other than that terrible uh, old rusty penny taste in the back of your mouth, I highly recommend it if you're able to get it. I do realize that some people live in more developed nations than the United States and have health insurance that, you know, will provide that to citizens. If you're residing in the United States, then you may have heard that our um, government recently stopped paying for Paxlovid for people who become infected with COVID. And uh, now the manufacturer is charging 1300 big ones, US dollars for Paxlovid, which is a potentially life-saving treatment, which can keep people with, um, what do they call them? This is the buzzword, um, underlying conditions or it's something. People with other conditions that can make them more prone to ending up in the hospital. It can reduce your likelihood of ending up in the hospital because uh, Paxlovid is an antiviral that basically stops the virus from replicating. It has been developed out of a treatment for HIV, which uh, also works with uh, HIV to stop the virus from replicating. So I just wanna shout out all the scientists from way back and the scientists from now who have pioneered this treatment. I wanna express my gratitude. I am also a scientist and I don't want to miss the opportunity to point out how expertise translates to real world life-saving things. Uh, I know right now there's a lot of misinformation going on everywhere in the world. I'm getting a lot of glare. Just gonna scoot up a little. Um, there's a lot of misinformation everywhere and um, I just wanna shout out science because um, it's not like always sexy or glamorous, but when the going, that spot, when the going got tough, uh, the scientists got going and I really wanna shout out everybody who helped to come up with the vaccines and the treatments for COVID because I have asthma and I have an elevated BMI according to my physician. So those things put me at higher risk for hospitalization. I fortunately didn't end up in the hospital and uh, I was able to recover pretty quickly after I started taking Paxlovid. Whew. So that happened earlier this month. Other things that happened earlier this month, since the last time I saw y'all, my family members came uh, to do the walk to end Alzheimer's, my in-laws. Um, and we all had a weekend together and we were able to raise just about a thousand dollars on our team page um, for the Alzheimer's Association of America and we also raised so far I'm up to about 630 some dollars on Instagram so my goal total was two thousand dollars so if you have it on your heart 
to donate to that campaign, um, the association, the Alzheimer's Association does excellent work to research the causes and ways that we can prevent dementia and uh, Alzheimer's. So dementia is a type of, Alzheimer's is a type of dementia, kind of like how all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So there's really not that many things right now. And as a speech therapist, I work with people who have Alzheimer's and other dementias. So I felt like that was an excellent cause I could see. And now she's over here. What is going on? It's like the witching hour right now. So it's very important to me. I'm going to leave the link to my team page in the description if you would like to donate. So that was one thing I was a little disappointed in the walk is I expected there to be more kind of like encouraging things that we can do to prevent memory loss, but there wasn't that. So getting good night's sleep is a very important thing that you can do. Um, and I mean, knowing if you have some family history, some dementias, you know, do tend to run in family. So, um, you know, ask around, find out if you, you know, are prone to that. Uh, and also making sure that your general health is very good because heart health and dental health are indicators of uh, developing dementia. So you can find all this information and more on the Alzheimer's Association website. And that's not what this podcast is about, but I just wanted to, you know, we were, we were on the topic of science. Um, I also wanna say I'm deeply concerned with the United States government um, funding a genocide currently. Um, I just don't feel like it's my place as an American to give money to someone or some country that is really any country that is perpetrating genocide. And I saw yesterday in a very disturbing news scene that was supposed to be one of those like pick me up stories about how these lawmakers are discussing giving teachers a $1,000 tax break because teachers end up spending so much of their own money to buy school supplies and provide like new books for their students or anything that they need for their classroom. Now, I don't understand how we are missing the mark so much that we are like, yeah, let's give billions to do a genocide, but let's give teachers a tax break so they don't feel as bad spending their own money to buy things that the school districts should be providing. Like it's, I can't make it make sense. That's one thing I also want to mention. Just my general extreme disappointment with the United States government and our um, inability to condemn a genocide taking place currently right now. So I'm just editing the podcast now and in listening to myself talk, I realized that it sounds like I'm only condemning genocide because my tax dollars are paying for it. And I just want to be clear that genocide's wrong people killing people is wrong and more disgustingly people killing kids people killing innocent kids innocent civilians that's where my problem is that's the foundational level of the problem but then my money being used to perpetrate it is an additional layer that sickens me. So I just want to be clear that my stance on people killing people is humanitarian. And I very much believe that nobody is free until we're all free. And despite me not being an expert on every single historical facts about the Middle East or being a policy expert, wrong is wrong. And in this situation, I don't feel like I have a lot of power, but the least that I can do is to say that it's wrong. 
So just gonna slip this in there. I'm gonna leave that at that. And we're about to get down to the nitty gritty. I'm gonna start with what I have on today. I have on my spring sorrel and this is a pattern by Will and Pine. Let me look up what exactly it is so I don't mess it up. It's by Will and Pine and the name of this yarn is Lantana. It is a 50-50 wool silk blend from Passion It's Yarn, one of my favorite yarn suppliers. And this is I bought four of them, but I have at least one full skein left over. So I did use all four skeins, but I blended them in a way that I still have at least one 100 gram ball of yarn left over if I roll it all together. So this is the sorrel to end all sorrels. I thought that I had enough sorrels. And if you know me, I basically, you know, Will and Pine really should be paying me for, for the promotion of this pattern because if you've seen me anywhere on the internet, if you've seen me in the New York Times, if you saw me on the cover of the Kenyan alumni magazine, you probably saw me wearing a sorrel sweater. And I've knit three sorrel sweaters, the classic. This is the spring sorrel. And I have to say, I'm not crazy about short sleeve sweaters, but this sweater is the perfect sweater for fall. Like it's when you get those fall days and it's just the right, uh, the right amount of chill in the air, but not quite that like ultra sweaty, you know, summer heat, but also not that, you know, I need to get a jacket on type of cold, this is the sweater you're looking for. Um, the window for wearing a garment like this is closing today in St. Louis. The temperature outside right now is about 70 degrees. Uh, just about half of the leaves have fallen. So now I'm making my peace with wearing this next year. I did get to wear it outside two times and I feel like that was sufficient for this year. It's not the kind of thing I'm going to put a jacket on top of because, you know, you don't want to cover the yoke. Like the yoke is what's singing in this situation. So I'm really hoping um, it will, I haven't blocked it. So this level of ease is a little more than what I was expecting. I knit the size medium. And if I was gonna knit this again and have a fifth sorrel, which would totally be my business if I decided to make another one, I would size down to the small because even without having been wet blocked, it's got a little, you know, it's got a little life to it. And I don't mind that. It's good, you know, to have some things that's not clinging to the body, but this is supposed to be a zero ease or negative ease pattern. So I'm not sure if the silk content makes it a little drapier or if I just knit a size too big, but I think there's another one of these in store for my future. And I actually bought yarn for another one of these that I'm, I'm probably gonna make another one. I'm gonna probably make another one. Yep, and that's it. Let me see what else I have to say about this pattern. And I did write some notes. This pattern does not have any shaping. So the front and the back are completely identical. So you need to put a tag in it if you always wanna wear a specific side to the front or to the back. I like to put a tag in the side that has the joined edge where I joined the beginning of the round when I cast on. I like to always make sure that's in the back. So I need to put a tag in this. I would size down. It has very short sleeves. So once you finish the body on this, you're basically almost finished. You're like 90% of the way because there's only four rows of 
reverse stockinette before you cast on or before you switch to ribbing on the sleeves. So this is a perfect sweater for someone who gets stuck on sleeve island because there's basically no sleeves. Um, but because of how long the yoke is, you do get quite a generous sleeve without doing the work of a sleeve, if you will. So that is the spring sorrel. Now, on to something else that I'm very excited and thrilled to, um, to discuss. My Cleo Cardi. Now, this was the pattern that... I loved and that's why I decided to knit it but it just got lost in a sea of uncertainty due to the level of purling and you know I'm I'm not a pearl girl at all and you know I've had many people tell me oh you need to try this different style have you tried wrapping the yarn around your neck and then you can like you know pearl like that girl no I'm not doing that I'm just, I'm just not gonna do that. I have found a way that I like to pearl and I'm okay with it. I just really believe that this is knitting and I wanna maximize the knits in my knitting. So I have engineered a steaked version of this pattern. And the last time that I showed it to you, it was knit maybe about to down here but all of this under the sleeve separation, I tried to lazily just do garter stitch. And you can see how busy this yarn is. It is a beautiful yarn from Black Smoke Fibers. It is called Wild Berries and Cream. And this yarn is wild. That the, it's, it's putting the wild in wild berries because it just is very busy. And for a yarn like this, the best stitch to show this yarn its maximum glory is stockinette stitch. So I ripped back to the sleeve separation and I cast on these 13 stitches in the middle here. Let me cover my face up. So, so I cast on these 13 stitches in the middle here and it's kind of hard to see so I'm gonna flip it inside out so you can see the ribbed version and you can see, I watched several steaking tutorials on YouTube and I'm gonna link those. One of them, the person who did it had cut, she had only put in like five stitches for the steak and then it was very narrow and then she crocheted on top of it, then she was sewing on top of it. And I'm just not trying to get every single hobby that I do involved in this one project. So I decided to do some additional stitches. So I cast on 13 and as I was knitting them, I saw that another video encouraged you to do pearl bumps along the sides so you know where to pick up for your, um, so you know where to pick up for your button band on the other side. But then I thought, I can improve this. I can make this better. And I did a pearl bump right down the middle so I know where to cut. And that's this one that you see right here. So I'll be taking this to my sewing machine and sewing on both sides of this stitch in the middle. And then I'm gonna cut that stitch open. I already have my button bands done. I don't have my buttons attached yet. And if you have some ideas about buttons, leave me a comment on that because I'm not sure what kind of button would look good on such a busy project. I'm going to just put this on so you can see, you know, the direction that it's going, but I'm over the moon that this actually worked out and that this project is going to be finished because I had just, I was just avoiding it for so long. And now I don't feel like that is, that's not the story of this project anymore. So... 
here we go. I've got my center stitches here and you can even see right there down the middle, that's where it's gonna get cut. And then these two edges are gonna get rolled in like this and then sewn down. But this isn't the edge, this is the button band. So these little thickums right here are gonna get split and then rolled in and then this will lay nice and flat and then I'll have a cardigan. So you may ask, Darcy, would you do that again? Saucy, you in this damn bone. Yes, I would. I would absolutely do it again. I would do it again, except I wouldn't wait two years to give myself this good feeling I'm having right now. So this is a super wash yarn. So I'm gonna do that extra reinforcement with the sewing machine. And I have actually cut a sweater before. It was before I started knitting actually. And I was turning sweaters that I bought at a thrift store into cardigans by just cutting it. And then I did some bias tape along the inside. But this, this is a win. This is a victory. It is nearly done. And the only thing holding me back right now is just taking it to my sewing machine, getting it set up and getting it done. I'm very pleased with this. The details on this, I'm gonna leave in the description, but this is a cardigan pattern that's originally knit for three strands of mohair held together. And I decided that I was gonna just knit it with a fingering weight yarn because that seemed to be more or less the same. And what I had on hand was a fingering weight yarn. I'm not even sure that I did a gauge swatch for this. I was living on the edge a little bit more back then. So I'm glad that it did all work out. I have this much yarn left, which will be plenty for sewing in um, just the raw edges on this. But if I could do it again, I would go back and add the rest of this to my, uh, to, to the body. But because it's a super wash yarn, I know that this is gonna uh, stretch and it will get a little longer. So the sleeves are a little skeet for me right now, but I'm okay with them because I know they're gonna grow. The body, I would like for it to be longer and it will get longer once I block it. So I'm not pressed about that. This is a win. Next time y'all see me, I'll probably be wearing this. And hopefully it'll have some buttons on it. Maybe I'll do like a clear button, maybe clear or maybe like silver. I have some antique buttons for my grandmother that I wanna look through and see if they're, there are five buttonholes and they're, let me see, I'll show you the buttonholes. This is one of the buttonholes here. So I need a button about that size, whatever that size is. Maybe I'll just take it to the fabric store but I don't know, I hate going in there these days. Like going in Joanne, like Joanne and Michael, they done both lost their minds. Like, I don't know why everything in there is so expensive. Like, why is it so high? I don't remember it being like that. And now I feel like I'm about a thousand years old because I'm one of those people talking about back in my day, you know, I because back in my day, literally, when I was like a 10 year old learning to sew, every fabric in a damn store wasn't $10 a yard. I know that. I mean, even cotton. I can't get cotton. Anyway, this is gonna be done the next time. Other things I have cast on. The last cast on that I did was for the Earth and Air. I gotta scoop my stuff up. My last cast on was for the Earth and Air sweater, and it's a very lofty brioche pattern that uses two colors with a worsted weight yarn and a um, lace weight yarn to create this kind of fabric. And I'm using a Lola Bean roving that I spun that was gifted to me by Adela. Thanks so much, girl. I hope you're watching. Uh, this is a color I wouldn't have picked 
And the mohair, let me show you. This is the worsted weight yarn. And this is a City So Nice. Uh, they named it twice. And it is together with this plume lace from Plucky Knitter. And this is how they knit up together. So I think it's looking fabulous. So the only problem with this project is that every time I put the damn thing down, I can't remember what I'm supposed to be doing. So then I have to get on the internet and have to watch the tutorial again. And I'm just hoping one day the brioche will like stick. Cause I feel like it sticks while I'm watching it. And as long as I'm doing it, I'm okay. But when I put it down and I come back to it, it's like, it's like long division. Can't figure it out. So hopefully if I do it enough, it will stick. I have done a brioche project before, a two color brioche, and it was a cowl. And I just, brioche feels a little, I haven't heard anyone say this before, but it feels a little wasteful to me. You know, just the wrapping and slipping and wrapping and slipping and, you know, there's just very little knitting going on. I just feel like I'm going nowhere fast with brioche. So that's my current evaluation <laughs> of the project. Um, not so much a negative comment for the pattern, but more just for the technique of brioche. I think maybe you have to just do it a lot to like it. So I'm trying to like it because I, I do think it's beautiful. And I think finished objects with brioche are very beautiful and I want to be a person that wears them. So I have to be a person that knits them. So the other thing I will say about this project is it is really rewarding and gratifying to see the color changes in the yarn that I've spun. And knitting with my own hand spun is just so exciting. If you haven't ever spun any yarn, then you won't understand. But it's just like another level of appreciation for the craft. You really get to just appreciate your hard work that much more. And I'm not a person that, you know, laments mistakes in projects or, you know, beats myself up for not following a pattern exactly. So seeing all of the character and just the little lumps and bumps and, you know, eccentricities of hand spun yarn, it really makes me happy to use yarn that I've spun with before. So that's the earth and air. Let me show you my actual project. I just showed you the swatch. It's not much, but it's mine. It's what I've got going so far. Even a project of, you know, a million stitches. It has to start with just one. So here we go. This is what I've got so far. And it's coming along. It's it's going. Let me show you the other side. See, it's 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 going. Um I'm still learning to read my brioche, and it's definitely a technique I'm not as comfortable with. So I find myself not wanting to work on it as much when my battery is feeling low. So usually this is like a weekend project, a project to work on when nobody's getting on my nerves or when I don't need to pay attention to anything else except this project. So kind of like in the early days of knitting, you know, when you're really like, you know, up on every stitch, like I'm super concentrated on this. All right. I need to tell y'all about the amendment I'm making to my plan to do a 100 color sweater for my grandmother for her 100th birthday. 
I've switched it up after getting a lot of great feedback to being a 100 color shawl. Because I feel like a shawl is something that can be used more and loved more. And this is really a celebration of her life. So I'm gonna show you some of the yarns that I have collected. These are 100 um, colors of yarn that I have in my stash that I have used for other projects. And these are scraps. And the reason I'm using scraps is because uh, my grandmother was a seamstress and she worked at the city hospital in St. Louis sewing scrubs and baby clothes and all kinds of other stuff that a hospital needs people to wear to keep the place going. And okay, I had to take a break and just cry off camera because I was feeling so emotional about talking about this project, which I didn't see coming. Um, so the reason I'm using scraps and I'm gonna try not to cry again, I'm not gonna stop the recording again. Y'all just gonna have to cry with me. Um, the reason I'm using scraps is because my grandmother is a, a one out of uh, 13 children born in Mississippi to a sharecropping um, family. And, you know, she didn't grow up with a lot of money, but she grew up with a lot of love and a lot of hustle. So my grandmother moved to St. Louis in the 40s and she got a job uh, working at a hospital as a seamstress at the city hospital. And she worked at the city hospital sewing baby clothes and um, scrubs for the personnel in the hospital. And my aunt, uh, her sister worked at a leather jacket factory. And my aunt would get the scraps from these leather jackets and give them to my grandmother. And together they would sew these patchwork leather purses. And with the scraps from these purses, my grandmother made enough money to help ends me and to really put food on the table. Now these leather purses, I don't have one. I wish that I had one, but that these purses are talked about like in the family lore as like, you know, everybody who saw one of these purses wanted one of these purses. Like all of my, my aunts and uncles, like teachers at school were buying these purses. People at church were buying these purses. So you know, she really was a hustler and she used what she had to get what she wanted. And I think it is a perfect way to honor her life by using my scraps to make her a gift that will celebrate each year that she has lived. So I'm done crying. I'm not going to cry anymore about this today. So my idea for this project is to use these 100 colors and I did lay them all out to count them and make sure there is 100. Um, use them in a striping sequence with this yarn as a main color. Now this is a Pearl Soho yarn. Let me see that. Yarn called Broom. It's 58% mohair, 25% wool, 17% silk. And I have five of these. So I'm planning to use this as my main to kind of pull everything together. And it will be, I'm envisioning like a, like on the bias, uh, kind of stripey scarf, but like a very generous scarf. So I think maybe I'll do like five rows of the white and then two rows of the color. And it will be all garter stitch, just very plain with maybe an eye cord edge around it. I'm planning to sell the pattern once I complete the project and um, make it available to other people who maybe just want a scrappy project or, you know, you could use all the same yarn and just make it one color stripes. But I'm really excited to use this and it's my idea to just reach in and pull one out. I'm not gonna try and stagger the colors any specific way. And because I have such a plain main color to pull it all together, I think that it will all work. So that's where I'm going with the 100 color project. Another thing that my grandmother loves is going to Branson. Uh, if you know Branson, Missouri, it's kind of like a 
vacation town for city folks, I guess. Um, people do live there full time, but if you've seen the show Ozark, that's like the vibe of Branson. Um, so in Branson, they have like a musical theater scene. And my grandmother went several decades ago to see the show Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. And she loved that show. And I just think that this will be like, you know, like in the Bible, Joseph has a, a cloak of many colors, like she will have a shawl of many colors. So I think that would be the name for this project, the shawl of many colors. So that's where that where that's up to for right now. It's my plan to cast on after I finish this, um, my Cleo Cardi and just reach into here and show you one color at a time how I get through these 100 colors. I also plan to say what the project is that I worked on each one of these with. Um, some of them are projects that, almost all of them are projects I've finished or gifted or you know they've gone on to their forever project, but some of them are uh, yarns that I wound up for other projects that didn't work out or there's scraps left over from a project I have really um, fond memories of. So I think this is just the perfect gift to give her. And we're planning a big 100 year uh, party for her. So I'll likely give it to her ahead of that. And I just hope that she loves it. And if she doesn't love it, she will pretend that she really likes it because that's the kind of person she is. And she'll know how much hard work went into me making it. So yeah, okay, I'm not crying anymore. The last thing I wanna talk to you about is my Oceanside sweater. I haven't made any progress on that, so I'm not gonna show it. And my spinning, I haven't made any progress on that, so I'm not gonna show it. Um, the sun is literally setting on me right now and I am running out of light. So I'm gonna wrap this up by talking about the giveaway. I reached 2000 subscribers and I really want to um, thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel. If you like this content and you wanna see more of it, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get notified when I post a new video. Uh, as, a, as a thank you to everyone who subscribed, I am doing a giveaway and the giveaway will be attached to this video. So if you want to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is leave me a comment saying what your name is, where you're from, and what you're knitting. So just those three things. The prize for the giveaway is going to be a $50 Passion Knits yarn uh, gift card to shop anything in the Passion Knits shop that you uh, want to shop. And uh, I also have the other thing that's part of this giveaway is these three little daddies. And these are three hand sculpted clay uh, progress keepers or stitch markers. And these are from one of my favorite artists, Whitney Marie Anderson. And these are going to be part of the giveaway as well. So you can win $50 gift card to the Passion Knits uh, yarn online store and three little daddies. I will cover international shipping for these little daddies. And whatever you purchase from Passion Knits, you pay your own shipping. I'll just give you the $50 and that's it. So... I am very excited to get to know more of you from the comments and for entering this giveaway. Um, today is November 8th, and I'm going to continue this giveaway for the next 10 days until November 18th. And on November 18th, I will uh, post on Instagram. I also mention in my next podcast who the winner is. I will reply to your comment on November 18th. Um, if you are the winner, I'm going to use a random uh, comment picker to choose a winner. So to make sure that your comment is entered, say what your name is, say where you're from, and say what you're knitting. Um, 
Thank you so much for sticking with me. I don't have any acquisitions. I haven't really been buying any yarn. I have so much yarn. I'm just trying to work through some of the things I have in my stash already. So if you would like, uh, and that's already calling me right now. Um, by the way, yes, we are still together. Um, just in case anyway, he's at work right now working so that I can have those benefits that I talked about at the beginning of the video. So, uh, I actually got to go because he's probably calling me to see, do I need anything, um, before he heads on the way home. So I'm going to call him back and I will talk to y'all later. Thank you so much. And I will see you in my next episode. Bye.